Today, I'm down at John Kufleitner's to look at this elegant 1957 Cadillac Eldorado Berets. But before we take the tour, some background information on the Eldorado Berets. The Eldorado name dates back to 1953, and the Berets name started in 1956, and they went until 1958. 1957 and 1958 was the third generation of the Eldorado Berets. Designed by Harley Earl, and it was built using the Series 62 or the C-Body platform. Other GM products that use the C-Body platform. Olds 88, Buick Roadmaster. The 1957 Eldorado Berets is an X-Frame car. Okay, let's talk about the 1957 Cadillac lineup. It's a little bit confusing. They offered a Series 60 special Fleetwood sedan that only came in a four-door. It's up there in the uh, top left-hand corner. And then to my understanding, the Series 62 was the entry-level Cadillac. And it could be had in a two-door, four-door, uh, two-door convertible configuration. Then in the middle sat the Eldorado division and the Eldorado division came in the Seville which was the hard top the Eldorado Berets which was the convertible offering they offered a limo a Fleetwood sedan limo and then at the very top was the Eldorado Brome it was series 70 and the only reason I'm mentioning this car is because it was to up the ante on the 56 in 1956 Lincoln launched the Continental as a separate make and that car was totally hand-built. And the only option that you could get was air conditioning, which put the purchase price up over $10,000 in 1956. So Cadillac made the Eldorado Brome, which was $13,074 in 1957. It was really, really expensive. You could buy almost two Cadillac Berets, which they were pretty expensive too. They were about, they were in the $7,000. We'll get to the actual price, but it was over $7,000 in 1957. So the Eldorado Brome was something that only princes, kings, movie stars could afford. I just wanted to mention the Eldorado Brome real quick in its existence, but back to the Brits. All right, let's talk about some specs. The Brits rides a 129.5 inch wheelbase. It's 222.1 inches long, 80 inches wide. 57.9 inches tall it has a weight in between 5,000 pounds and 5,500 pounds it gets around 10 miles per gallon 1957 was the last year for the single headlights after 57 and 1958 they go to the quad headlight style uh, the base price for the Berets was $7,286, which was equivalent or is equivalent to you going down and spending $58,324.04 on something now. It was $2,000 more than the Series 62 convertible, hence only $1,800 were built. Okay, let's go over some features and options offered by Cadillac. Air conditioning, six-way power seats. Leather seats, power windows, power steering, power brakes, power convertible top, power self-latching trunk, Autotronic Eye, which is their automatic light system. They had automatic headlights in 1957. I think they also had automatic dimming lights, and I think that the Autotronic Eye played into that. Signal-seeking radio, a.k.a. the foot radio. You could move your foot underneath the sensor, and it would look for the radio station white wall tires okay two more points i want to make before we do the tour of the car i wasn't going to share this but i am so i got flack i've been getting flack a lot recently because of lack of research or whatever so i just wanted to show you this this is generally what i go through whenever i research these older cars this person that did the article of uh this particular thing I didn't take any information off of this article because they don't even have the right picture of the right car that they're saying that they have information for. And then the second one, you know, the Baritz name started in 56 and they're trying to tell you it started in 58 while showing you a picture of a 57. That was just two sources. I did a video a couple weeks ago where the source, I wish I could find the source, was under the impression that every Ford engine made is a Y-block engine. And it's not, but, you know, 
according to that source, every single engine to date from Ford is a Y block. I just wanted to simply show you the discrepancies that are out there. All right, getting inside the 1957 Cadillac Eldorado Buritz. Just look at this door panel. Look at how nice it is. It's like a vinyl material. This is a hard plastic line that comes through there. I don't know if that's Bakelite or what that is, but just check out all the chrome. Nice door handle. It's, it's pretty big. Chrome accents down on the bottom. It might be aluminum, polished aluminum or chrome. This door panel has a nice pocket. There's the window crank. This is for the vent window, of course. Door handle. This is the control of the mirror. Isn't that cool? That's really sweet. This has electric windows, which were found right here. All four electric windows. Just look at all the chrome. This is for the headlights. This is a, that's for the automatic headlights, I believe. There are two oval pods that protrude out from the dashboard. On the left-hand side sits the left-hand turn signal indicator, temperature gauge, oil light. In the center where the speedometer is, is the speedometer itself. Right below it, odometer. Right below that, all your drive ranges. Inside the second pod, the second oval shaped pod on the right-hand side is the generator light, fuel gauge, as well as the right turn signal indicator. Right underneath the oval pod on the left-hand side is all the defrost settings as well as the heater controls. On the right-hand side is all the air conditioning settings, air conditioning controls. So passenger has an ashtray. Driver's ashtray is right here. Glove box is in the center. Just look at how big that glove box is, it's huge. I can't convey how heavy this door is, but it feels like a really heavy quality piece. Now I'm gonna get inside the back, but before I do, just notice how wide, how thick these seats are. They're very thick and plushy. look at the quality it's carpeted on the back of the seat all right I'm gonna get in the back of the Brits sitting in the back of the Brits I got a little bit of headroom I wouldn't say that it's a, a lot I'm gonna move the seat back there is um there's enough space back here I'd say to, to ride especially like if you're an adult or if you're putting kids back here kids would fit back here perfectly man it is so nice this is the nicest 50s interior I've been in period it's so nice it's so quaint got a lighter back here as well as the window switch ashtray that comes out so you can clean it out easily same on this side nice storage place to put stuff for your like phone if the convertible top is in use notice that the convertible tops all chromed out the ribs are all the ribs are painted body color but it's all chrome up in there with body colored so that's pretty cool that's how much space is there for the other passenger but notice the seats there's a rear speaker here that's where the convertible top would go it's a plexiglass rear window so this is power seats. Notice the bottom of the bucket, the seat bucket or whatever you want to call it. It's all chromed out. It's either polished, it's either polished aluminum or chrome. It looks like chrome. Alright, this is me sitting in the front seat of 
the Cadillac. Lots of headroom up here. Lots, lots of room to drive this. This, this steering wheel is absolutely massive. It's probably at least 20 inch steering wheel. It's almost pencil thin, like colored pencil thin. It's really nice. Cadillac's actually one of the first companies that started putting gas fillers in ridiculous places. You push this in and there is the gas filler. Coming around here to the back, just look at how much styling, how much detail this went into. I'm pretty sure that this is an exhaust port. These are backup lights. Coming up here to the trunk. That is a full-size spare, the jack next to it. Just check out this fin design. Cadillacs had some of the nicest fins in the 50s. And this car is no exception. Okay, getting under the hood and looking at the power plant that powers this beast. It's a 365 cubic inch displacement, has two valves per cylinder, 90 degree V8. It's cast iron block and heads. It produces 325 horsepower at 4,800 RPMs, 400 foot pounds of torque at 3,300 RPMs, has a 10 to one compression ratio. This one has the triangular, it's th that golden triangular Air cleaner, it was called the Batwing air cleaner, and there is dual quads feeding this engine. Two four-barrel Carter carburetors. The performance was 0 to 60 in 11.2 seconds, had a top speed of 118 to 120 miles per hour. It was paired with a four-speed hydromatic transmission. One more note I forgot to talk about. I totally forgot to talk about the Buffalo grain leather seats, which I'm not entirely sure if this one had it, but these seats were really, really nice. All right, on to the pros and cons. For the pros, unique rear end appearance, smooth, high speed performance, luxurious interior, somewhat rare, especially the 1958 milestone car status. Against it, the cons. Heavy gas drinker, less interesting than the 1953 to 1955 Eldorados, with the 1958 model considered less desirable. They only made 815 1958 Eldorado Barrettes, just so you know. So what cars would you like to see in the future on this channel? Put them in the comment section below, and until next time, toodaloo!